This week we're starting stage two of the Blooming Brioche Knit Along, and it looks like you all did pretty well with the first stage of the pattern. I saw that a few of you had some questions, but overall the person who had the most trouble was me uploading to YouTube. So I'm getting started early this week. Now, before I talk about what's happening in the next stage, I just want to thank you guys for posting all of your different colors and yarns online. It's always the best, um, it's the best thing about, you know, having places like Ravelry and Instagram is getting to see how everyone's projects are different and how everyone makes it fit with what they like to wear. So it's really exciting to see all the different versions going up. Now, in this stage, we're going to be doing the sprouts, the leaves, and the vines. The sprouts are just a short transition from the bulb pattern, that's the repeating pattern of the body of the shawl, into the entire border. After that, we're going to work the leaves and the vines, which are more of an all-over pattern with this kind of leafy motif. And the way that that's created is with a different stitch called the brioche four stitch unwrapped decrease. So in the sprout stage, we're going to see only two of them worked right in the center of your shawl as kind of an introduction. And then in the leaf stage, we're going to start working a lot of those. And what's really different about this decrease is that we're going to be working it on the wrong side row in the dark color to create the points in the leafy shapes. So when I say that we're working it on the wrong side in a dark color row, remember that that's a knit row. This is a knit decrease, but it's going to have a really different effect. So you can see what that looks like on both sides of your work. Now, it's also important to note that there's another new stitch, the brioche four stitch increase, but I think that you guys can all handle that. And there's a video for that as well up on my YouTube channel. So at this point, if you do choose to add a fade to your shawl, you can start anywhere you like and work in the pattern, simply alternating the same way that we did in the swatch between light color two and light color one, every two rows. There is a recommendation for where you would begin your color transition in the pattern and that would be in row one of the vines section. So you'll see that when you get there. But if you've just worked in the bulb section, we have two sizes in the file. If you're working something larger than that, you're going to need to start your color fade a little bit earlier than the recommendation in the pattern, just so that you don't run out of light color one before you're able to make a smooth transition, okay? So, if this sounds like it's a little confusing to you, revisit that fade video from the swatch that we did earlier in the project and refresh yourself on what's going on so that before you start, you can choose where you're going to put that color transition. Now, when I, when I did mine in this, I actually have continued alternating those rows into stage three, and that is what is in the instruction so it says don't break any colors and make sure that your yarns are both joined as you go into the next stage because we're going to continue, right? But if you're moving that around or if you're working with three colors of light color, you can do that however you want. So last week, a few things did come up that were wrong in the pattern. I think there were only two areas that were really confusing. The first was that in one of the rows, the six stitch increase, brioche six stitch increase was written as brioche six stitch unwrapped increase. I think that most of you caught that you actually can't do that stitch or that it must have been a typo, which it was, because there was no definition for that. And it's true, you can't have an unwrapped increase. So you just work that normally. The other place where there was a little bit of an issue was in the chart. It was in um, in the bulb section and there was a six stitch increase that was marked. The chart was correct in terms of the units wide, but it did say there's a little eight in the symbol instead of a six. 
So what happened there was just basically when I was first beginning, I didn't know, um, I didn't know which numbers corresponded to which increases. So I marked them all wrong and most of them got fixed and that one got left behind because the numbers are so small that they're really hard to read. And I apologize for that. For anyone who did it wrong, I'm sorry. Um, I've gone through and I've checked again, but I've also enlarged all of the numbers throughout the chart so that they're easier to see. I don't want that kind of confusion happening again, but I also don't want the numbers to be so small that it's, you know, that you're not reading them. So that's a change. Now, if you joined in after this first week and you're we all working that together, you're going to see corrections in that file. You're not going to have to worry about those. So if you're joining in late, don't worry, everything's fine. And if you already have that old file, those corrections will be made in this week's update. Now, at some point this week, I'm going to start uploading next week's videos. There aren't that many, but I will actually be away again for Thanksgiving. So I'm going to be in a different time zone and I'm going to be in Alaska, which is four hours different. It's closer to Pacific time. So if you're in Europe, you probably won't get an answer from me until, you know, pretty late, like after you post. But one of the mods is in London and another mod will be working from the East Coast. And I'm actually going to have someone post the pattern and make those videos public from a place with more reliable internet. I know I'll have Wi-Fi and I know I'll have cell service in most places, but I haven't been there before. I'm really hoping that everything goes smoothly, but you'll still, like, I'll be checking in with you. It just might be at a funny, funny time. And I didn't think about the fact that it is going to be Thanksgiving Day when this goes up. So for those of you in other countries, it's an American holiday and most people eat a lot and fall asleep. So I'm not really that worried, but if you don't hear from me that day, I've fallen asleep. So remember to add your, add your project and your pictures to Ravelry or Instagram. You can post with the hashtag Blooming Brioche K-A-L and I will be posting Ooh. pictures. Coco, do you want, want to say something? No? Okay. I'll be posting some pictures from Alaska. I understand it's dark a lot there, but I'll try to get something in the light of this project. And I will see you, um, I'll be back on the 24th to check in and some of you might be done by then. We'll see. So have a good week, and I'll see you again in the forums. Bye.